Have you ever been told something that you believe to be true only to find out later that it wasn't true at all? My husband Joe and I have three amazing children. Our oldest son, Zach, is standing in front of our twins, Noah and Alexis. We brought Noah and Alexis home from the hospital in August of 1996, and we were filled with hope and dreams of a bright future. But our dreams quickly turned into what some of our friends would later call a nightmare. You see, Noah and Alexis had a lot of medical problems. They were colicky for 15 months. They cried nonstop throughout the day and the night. They never slept through the night. They had developmental delays. They weren't reaching their milestones. Alexis had seizures. Noah threw up every day. They had a lot of medical problems. And when they were close to age two, we were told that Noah and Alexis had cerebral palsy. And we believed this diagnosis to be true. And so we moved forward with all of their treatments and all of their therapies based around this truth that we were told. When they were five years old, we started to notice that Alexis was getting worse. Here's a video of Alexis at five. Can you say your ABC? That was our little girl. That was our baby girl. And she was getting worse. By age five and a half, she could no longer sit up. She could no longer swallow food. Her arms were up to her chest. Her forearms would point down, and her body would tremor for hours at a time. And we couldn't reach her. Her eyes would roll up in her head. She couldn't walk. She certainly couldn't stand. Now, I had done research from the time Noah and Alexis were nine months old, and I didn't have any background in research or medicine. My background was actually in real estate sales. But as a parent, I was determined to do whatever it took to make my voice heard in their medical treatment and to make sure that I was on top of everything that was going on with them and that they were going to get the best treatment available. And when they were five and a half years old, I found an article that spoke of a different disorder that mimics cerebral palsy, but it's treatable with a medication. And one of the common symptoms in this other disorder that separates it from CP fit Alexis. And when I read the article, I knew, I knew without a doubt that this is what Alexis had. Five days after reading the article, through a series of truly miraculous events, doors opening, we started Alexis on the drug L-Dopa. We gave her a quarter of this tiny little pill the first time at night. And she slept through the night for the first time in her life. You see, she had a sleeping disorder, so she never slept through the night. The next morning, we gave her another quarter of a pill, and she walked out to our car on her own. She got into a car for the first time in her life on her own, and she pulled a seatbelt down for the first time in her five-and-a-half-year-old life. A couple months later, Noah's onset started. His right foot started turning in. His head started going down. He started drooling. You see, this is a progressive disorder. It just gets worse until it robs you of your ability to function. We were looking at wheelchairs for Alexis. We were looking at feeding tubes. She lost 20% of her body weight a month before I found the article. We were starting to lose her. So Noah's onset started, and we wanted to start him on the drug L-DOPA as well. And the multiple neurologists that we took him to refused to start Noah on the medication because Noah continued to throw up every day. And the drug is known to cause problems like throwing up. And so the neurologist said, no, 
You know, this is not a good idea. And we pushed and we used our voices until we finally were able to start Noah on the medication. And after six years of throwing up every day of his life, Noah stopped throwing up. And he makes no medical sense whatsoever. And within 10 days, his feet went back to normal and his drooling stopped. And we had a new life. Alexis was in gymnastics and dance. She was playing golf. Our little girl was running races. And Noah was in basketball and soccer and played baseball and was running. And we had a new life and our dreams that we had originally for our family started to come back into focus. In 2008, when Noah and Alexis were 12 years old, we moved to San Diego because of the promise of all the biotechnology companies and all of the diagnostic tools that they were developing. One year after we moved here, Noah and Alexis were 13 years old. Alexis started struggling for breath, so much so that we had paramedics in our house on several occasions trying to get her breathing again as she was turning blue. And we ended up back into the world of specialists and unknowns and emergency room trips. We had seven emergency room trips in the first two months of this new issue. And I'll never forget driving her one time to the emergency room and I was looking at her as the color was draining from her face and her lips were starting to turn blue. And I said, Alexis, just hold on, just hold on. And I remember praying, God, please, please don't take my little girl. And we had 18 months of trying to keep Alexis alive while we were searching for answers, and nobody was giving us any answers once again. Alexis was inhaling racemic epinephrine through a nebulizer just to keep her vocal cords open. We had to pull her from every sport. She couldn't even walk down the street without needing a treatment. In 2010, when Noah and Alexis were 14 years old, we used our voices, we were able to open up doors to have Noah and Alexis's whole genome sequenced. They drew their blood, one blood draw, and they were able to extract from this one blood draw their whole genome. And they were able to analyze their whole genome and they found the genetic mutation responsible for their neurologic disorder. And so not only did that tell us that the original article that I found where they were low in dopamine levels, that was a broader diagnosis, but this was a specific diagnosis, the first black and white evidence we had of what we were dealing with. And we found out that their, another neurotransmitter level was low. So we were able to take this information back to their neurologist. We were able to add another amino acid to their L-DOPA, something you can get over the counter. And after 18 months of not being able to breathe, of struggling to stay alive, Alexis started breathing again. Within 10 days, she no longer needed her daily inhalations of racemic epinephrine. And within three weeks, she was back to running track. This is five weeks after starting the medication. Good job, Alexis. Let's see what the final result is. Yes! Yes! Alexis is really excited about life, and um, she really enjoys uh, track, if, if you didn't notice. And so this is Noah and Alexis today. And so I have a question for you. Would anyone here like to meet Noah and Alexis? Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I remember all the times my mom was sharing to you. One time in particular, I remember so clearly 
I remember playing in our backyard in Phoenix, Arizona. I was able to move, even though I struggled. But then, all of a sudden, I could no longer move. I was frustrated, and I was trapped. I remember my dad having to come pick me up because I could no longer move. I was screaming and crying because I wanted so much more for my life. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. I now compete in track. I run. I compete in the 400 meter dash. And I honestly cannot explain to you the feeling that I get when I run the race. To a, freeing of, a feeling of total freedom. And through all of my struggles and challenges that I have faced, I have learned, I have personally learned, to never, ever give up hope and to always live life to the fullest. And might I add that my sister got a varsity letter her freshman year at La Costa Canyon High School. <laughs> Dang, that sister of mine is fast. <laughs> I remember when I was five playing in that same backyard I had this urge to throw up. I went over to that corner. Man, that corner. I remember a white wall, I remember dirt, and I remember rocks. I remember I went over there and I threw up. And I also was playing with my best friend Tyler at the time. And I went over there and I just threw up. I felt so frustrated with myself. I was thinking, this is so bad. Why does this have to happen to me? My friend over there, who is normal, doesn't have to do this. But instead, I have to pick a corner and go throw up. And now today, I've done four years of cross country, and that doesn't happen to me anymore. I don't have to pick a corner to go throw up. I know that God is good, and I know to live, li to live life to the fullest and just to enjoy life. I also know that hope is unlimited, and hope has no boundaries. So it's our hope that our family's story has inspired you today to use your voice, whether you're in a medical challenge, maybe a personal problem, or something's going on at school, use your voice because it matters. And never, never, ever give up hope. Thank you. Thank you.